All right, so here's the deal, boys. We're gonna do a standard two-on-two -two fast break. Get me the ball. I'll get my way down the court, and I will score. None of this fancy shit. Just a simple screen. All we need to do is stick to fundamentals. You got me? I gotcha. Simple enough. All right, then. Well, with that settled, welcome to the Channel Chasers Podcast. I'm, of course, your host, Jay, and joining me, as always, is my boy, Tony, and away in the bathroom, Brian. So tonight, we will be talking about the new Netflix rom-com, Players, starring Gina Rodriguez, David Wayne Jr., and Lucifer himself, Tom Ellis. So this is going to be a fun episode. For sure. Yep, yep. I'm here for the last minute, all of you. All right. Just in hey. time, because we can't start an episode of Channel Chasers without jumping right into the news with Brian. Big news, people. Big Marvel news. I would be surprised if my fellow co-hosts hadn't heard about this yet. Okay. But uh, it's fantastic news, you could say. Okay. 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 Right. Did, have not heard this. Is it happening? Is, is it on happening? The, on Valentine's Day of 2024, they released the official... Official four of the Fantastic Four. Okay. Is it true? Is it true for mostly? Oh. Mostly the internet called it. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Hit me. Hit me. Hit it. Hit it. As Reed Richards, Pedro Pascal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's a. That's a, yep. Inter internet called it, and that and that's a good choice. I'm down with that. As Sue Storm. Vanessa Kirby. Yes! Mm, excellent, excellent. Called that one. Jay, you might not know this actor too much yet, mm. but he's perfect. Playing your younger brother, Johnny Joseph Quinn. What's he been in? Uh, he was Eddie in Stranger Things. Oh, oh, oh no, I'm like, I like him. I've seen Stranger what? Things. And isn't oh. he... It, isn't Quinn also... I know one of the Stranger Things kids played one of the uh, Losers Club members. Oh no, that was no, no, uh, no, no. That that's Finn Wolfhart. That's Finn Wolfhart. Yeah. Uh, he he was part of the teen group. Ah. Okay, okay. But yeah, right. I, I saw I saw Stranger Things season four. I but... think we even covered it. What the fuck was my brain thinking? I don't know. We 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 even did the Chrissy wake up meme and everything. But yeah, whatever. But anyway, anyway, Justice Quinn, good on him. It's uh, good casting. Oh yeah. Uh, as long as he just got it he just has to dye his hair blonde he just has to dye his hair blonde that's all that's all i'm asking all right and lastly as ben Grimm, i might get this name wrong and i apologize if i do ebon moss bakra okay. okay okay what's he been in what's he been uh, in he was richie in the bear and oh. uh micro in uh netflix uh punisher okay yes 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 okay 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 cool cool it's good uh, to have he it. was also, yeah sorry all right, it's good to have that actor back in the MCU. Mm -hmm. Well, now with the Netflix show being canon, it's another instance of an MCU actor playing two separate characters. Well, I mean, you know, that's the magic mm -hmm. of mocap. Exactly. Oh, yeah, indeed. And it does mean that uh, unless they do some recasting, uh, minor spoiler for Netflix, uh, Punisher, Micro got a happy ending, and it looks like the happy ending will stick. Pause. Oh, <laughs> Oh, pa no. <laughs> oh, pause, Brian. Oh, oh, okay. No. That, that yeah, was, yeah. That one, yeah, that one, that one, that one was crazy. <laughs> that one was crazy. I mean, that one, that one was a big out. one. And yes, that was done on purpose. Oh man, that was that was crazy. You you but, you you out of pocket for that one. <laughs> but anyway, back to back yeah, yeah. to Ebon. Uh, one other big note about it, which makes it significant, mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. it's actually a Jewish actor playing Ben Grimm. I was just about that to ask. I was just about to ask because amazing. I didn't want to assume based on last name, but I wanted to make sure my hunch was correct. Yes. Cool. They actually got a Jewish actor to play a Jewish character. That's amazing. Which, is, which I think regrettably might be a first for the MCU. Yeah. I mean, well, they yeah. haven't had any other Jewish characters yet, though, so it's not... Well, yes, they have. Um, oh? There's been several, like uh, Wanda. Wanda's not Jewish. Wanda, Wanda's Romani. Yeah. I thought Romani Jewish, but anyway. Um, no, Romani Romani is just a, a term for nom a nomadic traveling class of people. But anyway, yep. anyway, uh, all great casting. Also, a little bit of a note is, uh, might show these guys later, but with the release of it, they did release a, like, I think it's like concept art maybe, but or... um, yeah, for the Fantastic Four and the actors playing them. But mm -hmm. there are two things of note about this. Okay. Which that, that we have just be. I was gonna say that we haven't heard the casting for the real hero of the movie. No, 
It's just, this might be window dressing, it might be just promotional stuff, or it might hint at things to come. Um, the whole image itself has a very 60s aesthetic. Oh, oh, yes. oh. I, 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 did see, I, I did see something about uh, a pedal card that looked very 60s. Are they, are they going to do what I wanted? Are they going to do what I wanted and set this in the 60s so Reed and Hank are, oh. Huh? Also, also, there was another person in that, uh, I guess person is a loose term, in that uh, image. Okay. okay. Herbie! Nice! Herbie! Of course, of course, of course, we, of course we have Herbie. It wouldn't be the Fantastic Four without Herbie. That's, okay, thank you. Finally, we wow. get, finally, oh. we get the dumb robot. For some reason, only the Roger Corbin version had the dumb robot. Yeah, uh, and uh, I hate to do this to the people at home we, now that we've gone exclusively audio, but uh, gents, uh, that is the image in the chat. Oh, I've seen this. I thought I I thought this I thought this was just art somebody posted on Twitter. Nope, oh, this is official. That's great. That's mm -hmm. great. I love yeah. this. I, I love yeah. this. I am here for this aesthetic. Mm -hmm. This is and I, this is gonna be great. You know what's what? I, one of the things I love about this whole aesthetic. What's that? The costumes themselves have a very almost sweatery kind of look to them. Oh yeah, it feels it feels very Kirby. It feels very Kirby. I I I like it a lot. The Fantastic and Four is one of my favorite. Uh, is one of is my second favorite team in all of Marvel. The X Men obviously top top them, but uh, you know I love the FF. And uh, and uh. The logo that our boy Tony here was talking about. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because I found that one too. Ooh. See? Look at this, Jay. That, Look at that, that, it, that is. is. That is very 60s TV show. I likes it a lot. This is. Mm -hmm. This is pretty. This now, is... I, didn't, I didn't see the first image, but good Lord O'Malley, I love it so much. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Like, if, if, the, if this art. Is any indication of the quality of this? Uh, I need I I needed this movie yesterday. Oh, mm. I'm I'm excited for this movie regardless. Uh, so so here's here's what I think they're gonna do in terms of origin, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's gonna be a little bit. It's gonna be mixing uh, very similar to how the MCU does. I think it's gonna mix uh, classic six one six with ultimate, and I think what's I think what's gonna happen is that Reed, Sue, Johnny, and Ben are going to be traveling in the rocket, uh, you know, get bombarded by the cosmic rays as per usual. But instead of landing back on Earth, a portal to the negative zone opens. Mm. And they get stuck in there. And that's how they pop back out modern time. I, I can see that. Also, yeah. another theory, another theory that I've been hearing around a lot is that people think that there's a chance that they could be from the 60s, uh, but then go to the quantum realm and mm -hmm. get trapped in the quantum realm. Yeah, yeah, the, qu yeah, I, yeah, the quantum realm was definitely a big theory, especially since they're, con uh, especially since Reed would be contemporaries with Hank. Makes a lot of sense. Also, also, Janet did, uh, get her get powers when she was trapped there also uh, like the the one the one thing that makes me sad is that uh mcu steve in mcu strange like wasn't a sorcerer for that long so it's kind of impossible for triumph and torment to have happened which is sad because it's one of the greatest stories of all time involving Doctor Strange. Yeah. Because none of the great Doctor Strange stories are just about Doctor Strange. They have to have a guest star. And oh, yeah. it's him and Doctor Doom, which I, I need to I need to know who Doctor Doom is. Well, that's an important you thing. Haven't, they haven't casted him yet. Yeah, well, well, it's super important. So I there's there's a current rumor going around about a certain actor who they're looking to get. Who who might that be? Ooh, Javier Bardem. Ooh. Oh. Oh. oh wait 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 a minute wait a minute something activated in my brain okay now this might be weird but follow my train of thought for a moment right all right all aboard mm -hmm. okay so we 
I know we don't normally do speculation station here, but just humor me for like a hot minute. All right. No, the, 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 uh, this is an exception. I'm perfectly, I'm perfectly fine. All aboard. Let's go. Okay. So we we have heard talks that Cavill would be playing an MCU, playing a role in the MCU, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Okay. Oh. That's oh. the case. That. That. That would be perfect. That would be perfect. You finally get Either to. Either option is good. Either option is good. He finally gets to stop playing a good guy and gets to play him. Him. Look. The goat. Mm. Look. Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom. Victor Von Doom. Victor Joseph Von Doom is him. All right. He is mm. him. I don't, I don't throw that around lightly with Marvel superheroes or supervillains, but Dr. Doom is him. Like if I... Well, not even if. When I eventually become a supervillain, uh, within the circumstances I somehow unlock powers, I will model myself after Doctor Doom because he is him, mm -hmm. and so Which am I. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so. But you see what I mean, right? Oh yeah, no. It, he he's he's got the height. He's got the height, which is the one thing that I was like the one thing that I was a little hesitant about with Bardem. Even though Bardem has the presence, he doesn't have the height. Whoever, whoever has to, whoever plays Doom has to be taller than Pedro because Doom's most iconic shit is always just him glaring down at Reed Richards. And also, you gotta have a bit of gravitas when you're talking about Doom. Doom is a verbose, arrogant individual, but that's just part of who makes him the GOAT. Yep, yep. And I believe, in my heart of heart, that Cavill can do it. Cavill, do it well. Cavill could 100% do it well. Um, and for the record, Pedro and Javier are the same height. Mm. Oh, okay. Put boots on that man to make him a bit taller. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. If if it uh, okay, if that's if that's the case, we just gotta we just gotta give Bardem some lifts and we're fine. I would I would I would, I would accept either. I would accept either as Doom. Because they're both five eleven. Oh. Yeah. They are fairly tall. How tall is six something? Six something. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like he wouldn't need the lifts, but no? you know, uh, Bardem is still a fantastic actor that I think. Cause like yeah. also the thing with Doom that is crucial, uh, mm -hmm. that uh is you can't rely on your the actor can't rely on their face. Exactly. It's no. all about the it's all about presence, voice, tone, physicality. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. And, uh, just Google it. Cavill is only two inches taller than them. Nice! Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Cool. But, but yeah. Oh, man. As you can see, people, we are excited by this news. We are very excited because I cannot wait to see freaking... <laughs> Frickin' Oberyn Martell get potentially cucked by a sexy fish man. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've also already seen the sexy fish man. We have already seen the sexy fish man, and he's pretty damn hot, so... Also, also, can I point out something that might come into play, might not? Mm -hmm. uh, uh. Our boy, our boy Peter is now an adult with no friends. Oh, that is oh. true. And in his first appearance, in Spider-Man's first appearance, he broke into the Baxter building. And he did piss off the four. Yep, yep, yep. I and, and John. Oh shit! Oh shit! To piggyback. Oh my bad, Tony. Go ahead. Uh, I would love. And I think you're about to say at least a little of what I'm about to say, but imagine, imagine a college-age Johnny meeting up. That's exactly what I was going to say, mm -hmm. because there was, because in the comics, Johnny and Pete were roommates at ESU. Let's oh. go. Let's go. John, jo Johnny went for engineering and Pete went for biology, some kind of science, one of those scientists. Because our, our good boy peter is big science boy so is johnny and last we saw him he was getting his ged yep oh man the, the pete the pete johnny friendship is one of my absolute favorites same same Let's dude go because Let's while go. I, while i'm similar to peter i definitely vibe more with johnny Mm -hmm. Except, unfortunately, I can't drive, so I I can't I couldn't I couldn't drive any of the sexy cars he has. But I yeah, would but I also, would love to. But also, I feel like if you could, oh, you I would. I that would be dangerous. I would one thousand percent if I could, and it would be dangerous, very much so. Like but, the whole uh, stunt 
stunt driver oh gunny, oh yeah daredevil oh yeah oh yeah i would i would be challenging people to races all the time you just you just you, you just look at me while i'm driving it's like a Pokemon bet. We made eye contact. We're racing now. That's how you race. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But you know, more about sports and competition later. Oh, uh, <laughs> man. Yeah, so next up, that was a fun stop at Speculation Station. But next up, we are going to do Screen Time. Screen Time is a segment of the podcast where the boys and I discuss the different pieces of media we've consumed in between podcast episodes. That can range from TV shows, movies, video games, audiobooks, comics, and more. Uh, so I'll start. I don't have much at all, really. Uh, I read the latest issue of uh, Justice League versus Godzilla. And uh, and uh, the G-Man attacked Atlantis. And and Arthur did the thing. Arthur did the he thing. Did, he did. Nice. Do you, I, I, I'm assuming you guys know what the thing is, but uh, I, do you uh, give me a, give me your guess as to what the thing is? Releasing the Kraken. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, he did the thing, and God and G-Man beat the shit out of that Kraken. He turned he turned that Kraken into calamari. Mm, nice. Mm. Yep, I would have totally. I I would I would eat Kraken calamari, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, yeah, it continues to be fun. It's dumb. It's real dumb. But like, mm -hmm. it's dumb in a like popcorn way where like you're entertained by the shit that's happening, even though most of it doesn't make sense. But you don't care because it's all cool. Uh, so mm -hmm. read that. I have been watching a lot of videos from uh, the Mary Marvelite channel. Uh, it's this dude who does a lot of these like history of X characters or, you know, like covers particular arcs or sagas that are important to Marvel history. Um, I actually showed Tony his uh, history of Emma Frost video. And now Tony understands why I'm an Emma defender. <laughs> I'm right there with you. So there's that. Oh, also, I discovered this one video that, like, changed my entire... Like, I need this thing to exist. So this dude, I forget... Co it's Cosmonaut. Yeah. Cosmonaut. Cosmonaut made a video pitching an X-Men RPG... Uh, X-Men school life social RPG. And I need it in my life. Mm. I need it in my life. I, I need to be able to fucking raise my X Factor with Emma, take her on a date to McDonald's, and watch her struggle to figure out how to eat a hamburger. Because she's, she doesn't do poor things. Mm -hmm. I th it's going to be the most beautiful thing on this planet. It needs to exist. What is this hamburger? Right, right. I'm just saying, man. It would be so good. And, that, and I could also have the option to, like, raise Jean's X Factor to right before relationship time. Have Emma's there at the same time and just Ken Watanabe the shit. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, oh yes yes because i i saw i saw them fight when gene caught uh, scott mental cheating so like i want to see them fight again mm. so that would be dope um it, it just has some really cool concepts i like i like what he i like what he pitched for the combat system using chrono trigger as like a as a base reference Honestly, that video nice. is what finally convinced me <laughs> to start playing Persona games. Nice. Now, to be fair, our boy here hasn't started playing yet, yeah. but he's interested. Yep, I will I will report back next week, hopefully. Or not next week, week after next, because that's when Tony will be here. Yeah, because just for the folks at home to get a good idea, I'll be traveling to visit our boy here to make sure that we just spend time together, because... I'm in desperate need of vacation here where I live. I don't get to see much. And it's part of the country I haven't visited yet. So aces. Yep, yep, yep. Gonna be fun. Oh, we, 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 we'll, we'll, talk, we'll, talk, we'll talk about it, uh, you know, the week he is here and stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, looking forward to that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I really want this X-Men RPG. Nice. I, I wanted it like yesterday. Yeah. Well, I guess I can go next. If All right. If you don't mind. Sure. Go ahead. I, I was waiting to see I, who was going to talk. Mm -hmm. So I made it just a usual tradition at this point to just rewatch those that give me great joy. Okie doke. And I decided to watch How Heavy Are Those Dumbbells You Lift again for like the make this the 12th time in the past few years since it released. I don't even I don't even count anymore because I literally use dumbbell every day to 
do workout routines. But I still love this show. It's wonderful. I, I think I've watched it just as much as Tenchi Muyo GXP, which I haven't done that rewatch. Oh, yeah. Really? No, no. Dumbbell, Dumbbell is fantastic. My favorite is still a white-haired Russian girl. Gina? Yeah. Gina is, yep. is she from the right. Yep, yep, yep. But another thing... To continue down the usual trend, I found myself finding another Crusader Kings, a Game of Thrones mod, but mm. not for CK3, but for CK2 instead. Okay. And this is for a custom house called House Sentinel by the YouTube channel. Uh, the first part of it is cheap. I don't know how to say the second part, but let's find how it's spelled here because I don't want to mispronounce things and get it wrong. Hey, and go go off. You're the one who's editing the pause, so. Let's see here. Found it. Uh, G I R O N C A. It's a fascinating little series about House Sentinel with the words stand at attention. And in typical oh. Game of Thrones fashion, Jay. Okay. The origin house is a landed knight like your typical clagain story yeah yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so and what what region is this house in if i remember correctly it's somewhere in the i believe in the riverlands okay that makes sense and it's in a i believe this is the case no that's a different that's a different one but i do think that Sentinel is take place in the river, but ah. I conflicted it with a different one, mm -hmm. which is DK3 that's set in the Riverlands called House Grand that borders the Westerlands. Gotcha. Okay. Because the House Grand one, which is a CK3 one, takes place in a world where Robert, out of grief, didn't become King of Westeros. Damn. And hmm. everybody decided, you know what? No one's going to rule the Iron Throne. We're going to be kings ourselves again. What? Oh, yeah. another and Age so, of Kings. That's that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And so House Grand, whose uh, sigil is a fox on a field. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're under the under the rulership of Hoster Tully. OK. And it has been a while since I saw that, but shenanigans usually ensue. I'm sure. I mean, both of his daughters are the worst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially the older one. Especially but, the know, older one. Li Liza, a, Liza just needed help. Yep. And as a general update, I, I was curious about mostly CK2 because you won't know why. Why? The Game of Thrones mod for CK2 has one of our favorite time periods oh. in Westeros 3. Oh. The dance. Ooh. <laughs> CK3, the only thing that they added recently is the Nine Petty King and oh. Bailey's the monstrous Blackfire. Oh, that's pretty fucking dope. That's, it is that, dope. That's, my, that's my personal favorite Blackfire Rebellion. Yeah, because Maleus is one of the most fascinating Blackfires you can ever come across. But yeah. For... <laughs> you're right, you're right. That's too much detail. We'll move on there. Okay, because I could go on this too, but <laughs> that, literally this could be an entire podcast. You, yes. you guys uh, should try to be in the room when you try to watch something like House of the Dragon with these guys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, it, it's, it's like, it's pause every two seconds, comment, pause every two seconds, history fun fact, well, Westerosi history fun fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Make I didn't quite catch that. I said what Westerosi, you not you, Siri, shut up. <laughs> the, my phone is an idiot, apparently. But, yeah, it, it, it's a fun time. Ex it ex is. Ex except, for when, except for when we watched the, what, was it the finale, or was it the episode before the finale? The, the episode with, with the, with the feet scene. Uh, that was that was the penultimate episode. Yeah, the penultimate episode. A real, real, qu real quick description. Like, was it? Uh, me and Tony, me and Tony, you know, did our normal watch along, and I, and our boy Donovan jumped in, because he also <laughs> was watching House of the Dragon, and we were watching doing our normal commentary, and you know, Donovan also participated in the commentary, uh, and Donovan was like the whole time he was like. This dude, this dude's gonna want to see her. This dude's gonna want to see her feet. This dude's gonna want to see her feet. I'm like, what makes you so sure this dude has a foot fetish? He's like, I don't know. I just got a feeling. I just got a feeling. And then by the end, he was like, I told y'all. I fucking told y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, you were right, Don. You were right. Mm -hmm. I wish you were. You're right. I wish you weren't, but you were correct. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yep. So it was an unfortunate reality, but. Another thing that I've enjoyed, just alluding back to a previous episode we had, mm -hmm. the the habit hasn't stopped. 
I've been listening to Has Been Hotel's soundtrack consistently as a little change up for the folks at home. Listen to the songs in different languages. It really changes your perspective on things. Oh. Some of the songs in Japanese are amazing. Hell is Forever in Japanese is fucking kick ass. It is. And Stayed Gone in Japanese is enjoyable. Cause you wanna know why? Why? Well, it's, you already know this because uh, well, yeah, yeah, but... yeah. I know, but I, I, I but I was le- but I was lead I was leading into the answer. Yeah, because at the end of the song, when uh, Box says "fuck" in desperation, because you know he got beat, he says it not only in English but also in Japanese. He says "fuck." Oh, it just that... right out there, just a random. That's Damn. that's fun. That's fun. It is it's hilarious, and also. Aye. Listening to Stayed Gone in different languages, you get to hear different uh, expletives. Yep, expletives. How characters refer to themselves in different languages due to the language structure. Mm-hmm. It is amazing. Nice. Hearing it in Italian is amazing. Nice. Hearing it in French is amazing. Yes, Brian, everyone who has enjoyed our Hasman episode, please, I implore you, nay, I demand you make some time, pour yourself a nice beverage, and just sit down and listen to the songs in different languages. It will heighten your has been experience. I can confirm the they are indeed fantastic. Which uh by the way, speaking about the Hellverse, uh-huh. uh apparently um now that uh season one is wrapped of uh of uh has been uh busy is working on the next half of off nice mm-hmm. nice nice i'm excited for that but brian uh what pieces of media have you consumed in between podcast episodes i'll try to keep it quick i'll limit it to just three things um one watch the latest episode of uh, dirty laundry mm-hmm. this one this one was uh Three of them were classic college humor dropout alums that are very funny. And then also joining the panel this time was uh, comedian Paul F. Tompkins. I believe that's his name. I know that guy. I don't think I know that guy. Uh, you you know him. You just don't um know his name. That, uh, that could be very true. He often works with Tenacious D as like the like stage presenter bar owner dude. Oh. Uh, he was also Mr. Peanut Butter on uh, BoJack. <gasps> Mr. Yeah. Peanut Butter! I love Mr. Peanut Butter! What is this, a crossover yeah. episode? Yep. Um, he was also in um, DuckTales. Uh, he was Gladstone. Oh, that's dope. And he's also currently the voice of Magilla Gorilla. Wait, what? Wait, what the, where, where, what thing is Magilla Gorilla in? Uh, Jellystone. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot that was still the thing. The Max, the Max animated thing. Yep. But, uh, but yeah, that one was pretty good. Uh, one of them was who missed their train due to Alicia Keys pooping. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good one. Uh, who got broken up with to the soundtrack of sex noises in the background. <laughs> hey, if you're, if you're, if you're going to do it. Uh, but, uh, spoiler alert, it wasn't them. It was somebody else. <laughs> Nice. In the other room. And then the one that the episode is titled on, uh, who, uh, getting this word for word, who has an active warrant out for their arrest? Oh, shit. Spicy. The answer may surprise you. <laughs> nice, uh, but... ni- nice TV announcer, uh, thing, Brian. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Then, um, cause you notice behind the curtains, um, we're trying to make, uh, TV time quicker. And so I thought it's like a thing. I'd start watching like a long form show that I hadn't watched yet to like take up the time okay so and uh at first i thought about watching uh the rookie the nathan fillion show Uh uh-huh watched about three episodes of it it's good but not my thing feel you i'm not really i'm not really into cop shows except for svu svu is cool well see here's also the weird thing is it is a cop it is a serious cop show but nathan fillion is still playing the typical nathan fillion character so oh yeah that 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 feels hella out of place yeah it it does it weirdly does especially considering the premise is that he's a 40 year old rookie in the police department yeah that no that's yeah that doesn't work and also people give him way too much shit for it and his character gets dogged on too much but he's also weirdly enough this is 
spoiler for season one. Weirdly enough, um, also in a relationship with the female rookie who's accurate rookie age. I'm pretty sure that's not allowed. And two, that's gross. Well, they're keeping it secret. It, it was a secret thing, at least from what I saw from just three episodes. But so I was like, okay. No, that's not going to be the show. Then I saw, because this was on Hulu, advertised another show. So, hey, finally give it a try. And I'm trying to stop myself from marathoning it too quick. The bear? And that is, nope. Oh, dang. Only murders in the building. <gasps> oh, I love that show. I love that show. Same, and I did not expect all the guest stars. Right. Like, and it's the like... Tina, the <laughs> mm -hmm. the Go Tina Fey one blew me out of the water. Like, I was not expecting that. Like the and the coolest thing is right that like each season is an isolated case and each season has like a different theme. So they have a different theme of guest stars. Like I believe well, season two's theme is like theater or something because I remember hmm. a bunch of like Broadway legends were up there. It was either two or three. Either two or three. Nice. I can't remember. I'm just on one right now. Nice. Towards the end of one, but I'm still on one right now. Uh, I think the latest episode that I watched was the one that uh, introduced Jane Levy. Nice. That was a good one. But And I'm loving the show so far. And the murder plus the comedy, the, the leads have great chemistry together. I mean... Oh, yeah. If Martin Short and Steve Martin, of course they would, but you wouldn't think it. But weirdly enough, Selena Gomez comes in and blends right in with them. Listen, Selena can hold her own comedy yeah. wise, man. She's always been funny. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And you know what the weird thing is? What? Their little trio dynamic kind of a little bit reminds me of us. I could see that. Where uh, you, Jay, are the Selena, I'm the Steve Martin, and Tony is the Martin Short. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know whether to be flattered or offended because that's a little racist. Well, it's because it's because she's the the quick witted, sarcastic one. I I know why, and you're correct. But yeah. I I just wanted to I just wanted to make you uncomfortable for a second because when uh, when you realize that yeah he, you also matched me with. <laughs> the only the only Latin character within the uh, within the trio. Oh, mission accomplished. It's clearly uncomfy. Yep, yep, yep. But I'm liking the show so far. It's taking twists and turns that I did not expect. Although as of right now, the suspect is who I think, who I thought the murderer was going to be. But that might still be a red herring. We'll see. It's interesting. Anyway. It's interesting because, like, with that show, mm -hmm. it's more serious than I expected it to be. Like, oh, I, yeah. I thought it was mostly going to be, like, a like a black comedy type thing. And there's plenty of that in there. But, like, they actually take the cases pretty seriously. Oh, yeah. It's more of a dramedy. Yeah. A murder mystery dramedy. Yeah, yeah. I, it definitely reminds me of the old reruns I used to see of... Uh, Angela Lansbury's uh, Murder, She Wrote. Kinda, yeah. Also, a little bit of Columbo. Uh-huh. Definitely. But yeah, that's, it's, it's great you're watching that, though. I, I really yeah. enjoy the show. Which, uh, by the way, just really quick fun fact. Mm -hmm. Did you know that a few years ago, I think it was a few years ago, they tried to do a reboot Columbo? Dang. And uh, it never got off the ground, but you'll never guess who they got to be Columbo. Who'd they get? And I actually think it's kind of perfect. Who'd they get? Mark Ruffalo. Oh, yeah. That's all. I could see that. I could definitely see that. But anyway, that's it for me. All right, cool. So last segment, but certainly not least before we jump into the official discussion is Trailer Talk. Trailer Talk is a segment where our boy Brian has gathered six, count them, six brand new trailers, at least as of the recording of this episode. And then we pull up his playlist, which you guys can as well, at least the YouTube people, down mm -hmm. in the description below. And then through the magic of editing, we give you all our rapid fire impressions slash reactions to the trailers. So while we do that, please enjoy this word from our non-existent sponsors. And we're back. Okay, okay. Some very good trailers this week. Uh, none, none that I, none that I absolutely hated. Although, like Brian has thrown us any stinkers since. Craven. Uh, even when I do, like with uh, Madam Web, I've now learned my lesson to not have that be the last one. Which, by the by the way, audience, audience, <laughs> do yourselves. I, I'm not gonna go into the full on rant, but do yourselves a favor. Don't spend money on that thing. I 
I made I made my friend from college spend money to watch it just so he could recap it for me. And it's bad. It's just as bad as people say. This is the one time we 100% believe the critics. So, I mean, just a warning. When it gets worse box office than Fant for Stick. That, that's hilarious and well-deserved. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so trailers, where do we want to start? Where do we want to start? Start at the beginning. It is a very good place to start. With, uh, what was it called? Gruff? I, th uh, I, think, yeah. that, I think that paper stop motion is really cool. I liked it a lot yeah. in, like, Kubo and the Two Strings. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this is, uh, for people that don't know, this is um, Righteous Robot. And uh, this dude has been chronicling his adventure of making this movie for, like, a year now. And uh, he's been making this movie for years now. Him single-handedly doing the paper craft. Yeah, that's impressive. That I, is amazing. His main character looks a little bit like the, the Priceline commercials girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, but, you, uh, if you're old enough to remember uh, if you're old enough to remember that you're welcome for jogging that memory if you're not you're probably too young and i am not going to encourage or endorse no. looking for those images but but, but just know anyway, they're out there yep but uh back to gruff though one other interesting thing about it is that even though he spent all these years making it he's going to be releasing it for free on his youtube yep that's Which, awesome between that and the Rhett and Link news that we covered, I wonder if we're going to see a resurgence of, uh, like, YouTube TV and movies, but, like, not through YouTube the corporation, but through... YouTube the, you, the actual, actual creators. creators. Honestly, that would be fantastic. I mean, you know, yeah. v Vizzy, Vizzy started, a, a like, a great example. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know she wasn't the first to do it, obviously, but, like, she's the, the most currently well-known... Mm -hmm. one to do it but yeah that was that was a really solid trailer um next one and the mm -hmm. the only other movie that we had on the list was a uh, french girl yeah uh, zach braff vanessa hudgens uh I, I i i think the premise is funny uh zach braff is pretty funny himself uh, i mean it I'm... it seems it seems by the numbers but like by the numbers isn't a bad thing with rom-coms yep and to see like a pissing contest between Zach Braff and uh, Vanessa Hudgens. I'm just gonna that was not I, on my. I'm just gonna tell you right now, like, well, it's not that rom coms were ever realistic, but like it is super unrealistic that Zach Braff wins over Vanessa Hudgens. Look, look, if I was in this situation, I don't think I would win over Vanessa Hudgens. I would just, oh yeah, I would just shake her hand and raise the white flag, and you know, maybe offer a threesome. Indeed, but you know, that's just me. I don't think Zach Raff is bold enough to offer the threesome. Nah, I would give it the old college try and just. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go down like no bitch. I would, I would fight exactly. for it. But I know, but I know, I know in my heart of hearts, I would lose to Vanessa Hudgens. Yeah, because it's funny. But it's still, it. I would see it as like a if I can prove that my goofy ass can still win anybody's heart regardless of someone who is more attractive than me. I would wear that like as a badge of honor. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You you know who, you, you know who I could beat in this situation? Zac Efron. I could beat Zac Efron in this situation. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Um, especially post surgery, Zac Efron. Yep, yep. But uh, anyway, it's good to see Vanessa Hudgens doing comedy again. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm glad she's still utili utilizing her voice because she was fantastic in Tick, Tick, Boom. Yep. Probably shouldn't uh, sing it well at somebody's funeral, though. Well, she shouldn't riff at somebody's funeral. She could sing. <laughs> you know, Amazing Grace is, you know, a, class a funeral classic. Yeah, yeah you could just... But... Yeah. No, no riffing because that's just like too extra. Yeah, it, it, it's it's almost like what you know Envy Adams did at Scott's funeral. Oh yeah, just oh yeah. <laughs> that funeral. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, I think that was, I think that's a fun rom com. Uh, is it a theater or? Hulu. It's a, uh, it's a it's a theater and then releases at a different day digitally. Okay. Okay. 
So that's a maybe. That's a maybe on the coverage, but it looks fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, speaking about Hulu, but completely different. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude. We are the lucky ones. We were dude, lucky ones. that shit was intense. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. But like, no. we gotta watch it. Uh -huh. I uh -huh. I love history and I love World War II history because it's history I can actually ask my grandparents about. Mm -hmm. Um. Also, it's starring Joey King and Logan Lerman. Yep, two very talented actors. And like, just from the period piece elements alone, Look, I'm a sucker for a good period piece, so yep. I'm down. And also, just uh, want to point out, uh, the last time Joey King did a limited series for... Was the act. Hulu. Yep. Yep. That, that, man, that Gypsy Rose bitch is wildin'. We, we, well, we don't got time. Yep. We don't got, we don't got time to talk about how Gypsy Rose is wildin'. Um, but that's not the kind of podcast we do. No. Mm -mm. But... The one that we do do... <laughs> uh, <laughs> equal... Uh, like almost as dramatic, but very, very messy. Apples never fall. Oh yeah, I this will probably be our first peacock show to cover on the podcast. Oh yeah. Um, uh, it it looks it looks messy, it looks very messy, and intriguing. Intense. Yeah, and intense. Intense, but it gave us the greatest rare insult that we've ever heard. Oh yeah, in I, a long I time. hold on, hold on. I, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. You are an emotional chaos. You are an emotional chaos black hole or sinkhole. I wrote black hole. It's sinkhole. Fucking erase this. You are an emotional chaos sinkhole. Oh yeah. I, I love that. I'm going to use that insult. I don't know who I'm going to use it on or when I'm going to use it, but I'm going to use it. Oh, oh yeah, indeed. I'll probably use it on Brian. It's great. I usually use insults on Brian. Well, I'm not a sinkhole, a chaotic sinkhole. <laughs> I, I never said I had to use it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, facts. Where's the fun in that? Where's the fun? But murder, mystery, family mess, hole. Oh, yeah. Hole. All, uh, all, oh, yeah. all the proper ingredients. Uh, based on a book by the same person that did Big Little Lies, which is still one of my favorite, like modern, like not Desperate Housewives, but like, well, kind of. They are Desperate Housewives, but like housewife murder mystery, secrets of the town kind of thing. Yep. And uh, also uh, did the book that uh, we never talked about it. Don't think we even saw it. Nine Perfect Strangers. No, we didn't see it or talk about it. Uh, that one is uh, Nicole Kidman as well. Oh. oh. But she runs a like resort relaxation place that might not be what it seems. Ooh. And uh, what you call it? Uh, Melissa McCarthy was in the first season. Huh. But it was. It was serious Melissa McCarthy, not... Oh, nice! Clown Good. Melissa McCarthy. Good for her. Adam Sandler, your shit. Also, uh, whatever his name is, the dude that's everywhere, Bobby, whatever his name is. Uh, okay. Kathy's stepdad on Ant-Man. Oh, that guy. Yeah, he was also in it. Cool. But anyway, Apple's Never Fall, Annette Benning, Sam Neill, Allison Brie. Yeah, looks great. stacked cast. Definitely looking forward to Good. covering it. Mm-hmm. But also, speaking about things that we're going to cover... Banditos. This yep. is, this, see, I, sh I should have... See, this is the this is the point in the podcast yep. where I regret, I regret leaving my guitar at the top shelf of my closet. But Banditos. Imagine Spanish guitar. Dun, 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 dun. I think this is really cool. Uh, me and Tony think this is the secret backdoor pilot to live action <laughs> battle tendency. Yeah. But... Uh, but to be fair to them, the stone mask is different from the JoJo one. Mm hmm But it's a stone mask, and we saw a vampire chick. So, you can't change our minds. Pillar men are going to be somewhere in this show. And that, and that vampire chick was bad as hell. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the actual plot of it is an actress recruits a team of treasure hunters to find this Mayan treasure. Yep. Look, chaos it, it has it has national treasure vibes and pillar men. I'm here for it. I'm here oh, for that. Yeah. That sounds oh, like yeah. a fun party. Now, now, are we? You, you think it's gonna be ACDC, Wamu? Or are we gonna? Are are they gonna jump straight to the big man cars? Hmm. Hmm. That is a good question. I think those individuals 
are not at the appropriate power level for cars. Yeah, I I think they could handle a Wamu. Wamu always seemed like a weak bitch. You know, mm. but and to be honest with you, Jay, we're forgetting one other pillar uh, pillar man. Oh, Santana. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, they could probably yeah. they could probably take him out, and that would be more appropriate. Yeah, that that's more their speed. Yeah, I mean Joseph barely had any issues with that man. Yep, and it, 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 it hey, it, if the, uh, all they got to do is learn some Hamon, and they'll be fine. A okay. Okay. But yeah, but, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Speaking, yep. And uh, speaking about extravagant people with powers. Oh the yeah. Last one. Oh yeah. Was X Men '97. Oh, oh yeah. You know, you could, you could, you could say the trailer was uncanny, astonishing. Uh, have different new. <laughs> I was like, uh, there, there are no other ones. Th that's all they got. It definitely wasn't dark. Astonishing. I, I, I said astonishing. I said, I said uncanny. I said new. That those, are, those are all the ones that I, I can remember. Yeah. It was not new, and it wasn't young. I mean, technically, it was new because. And we haven't had the fallen house of the egg. Huh? Yep. Yep. But yeah, that one was a little bit of a yeah. Reach. That was a stretch, Tony. But. We'll let that one slide. Uh, but yeah, X Men '97. I'm cautiously optimistic. Yep. That's all I have to say because the the original X Men '92 was a feat within itself. Because I don't know if you guys know this, Tony and Brian, but they were based uh, like X Men '92 was basically doing what old shonen anime used to do. Mm. They liter they were literally mm. writing episodes parallel to the comics as the comics were going. Oh. Were coming out, like, oh. like uh -oh. they had to, like they had to, uh, like rush out the bishop thing, uh, like the bishop's traitor's gambit twist. Uh, the X Men TV show came up with that because the comics hadn't yet, and then the comics just ended up saying, "Oh fuck it, it was on the show. I guess it's gambit." Ah. Yeah. Mm. So, like, I doubt it's gonna be anything up to that quality story wise, but. Well, I mean, seemingly confirmed Madeline Pryor. Yeah, Nasty. yeah, Madeline. Yeah, Madeline Pryor being there makes sense because we did actually see Madeline Pryor, uh, like in '92 because Cable showed up. Uh huh. So like, that's cool. We see more of Bishop, which really underrated. Even though all Bishop really does in X Men is guard the base because he's not really that popular. No, but which is unfair because he has a. Pretty awesome combat ability. Oh, yeah. And sick design. Sick design. Mm hmm Very. But, yeah. Cautiously optimistic. Uh, I will say that that power move was awesome. Oh, yeah. The Gambit-Wolverine combo. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, uh, voice casting, from what I saw, was cool. I mean, there's nothing to complain about when it's the original voice actors. Well, it's mostly the original voice actors. Um... Some of them, they switched around, like, uh, for Jubilee, mm -hmm. they actually got an Asian voice actress to voice her now. Cool. And the original, because that was one of the cool things that they did with this, is, uh, they, uh, racially matched all the people now, but instead of completely getting rid of the old voice cast actors who used to voice those original characters, they have them voicing other people. It's funny that you say racial, racially matched when, like, a majority of the, the field team is white. Uh, yeah, but you know what I mean. Oh, uh, that's funny. Like Bishop and Jubilee. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know who you're referring to. I just I just find it funny. It's like, oh, yeah, we have to racially match these white people. Oh, wait, the actors are already, the voice actors are already white. Oh, job done. We got to focus on these others now. <laughs> But yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll see when it comes out. Uh, mm -hmm. But also, mm -hmm. go ahead, Tony. We make sure that an injustice hasn't befallen us. Nope. If 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 they took if they took away Rogue's ass, we riot. You hear me, <laughs> listeners? We riot. We go. We 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 will sh we will shake our fist at Marvel Studios Animation. Bring our pitchforks and torches and and carry a giant effigy of Rogue and Rogue's ass. And we will say, bring it back, bring it back. We won't be uh, what was it, Billy Joel? Because we will start the riot. We will definitely start the riot. But yeah, um, so with uh, trailer talk out of the way. We can jump into uh, our game today. Uh, the game plan is to talk about players. So this is going to be a, a 
another one of those quick spoiler free type uh episodes mm -hmm. uh so what did what were you guys' first impression and uh just kind of overall spoiler free thoughts on players uh we could start with uh we'll start with tony it, it was your average rom-com it's a little special vibe you know what i mean mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we we know the tropes like the back of our hand at oh. least like over we we do indeed and when we knew we knew i mean we knew pretty much from <laughs> from scene one and technically we also knew through meta stuff but like even if we didn't know through meta stuff we would have known from yeah. scene one where we called it at scene one mm -hmm. we even had a feeling just after the trailer yep yep uh -huh. um, and speaking on our little uh entertaining film i will say if you're not used to typical rom-com shenaniganery the cringe power levels will exceed your threshold if you're not used to it it will there's there's a there's a lot of cringe there's a lot of cringe but like mm -hmm. like tony said you know rom-com friends are kind of used to cringe oh yeah so you know our tolerances are way higher than the average person yep um like and to he, think back he, i was i was just about to say like even even brian who doesn't like to be negative during things felt the cringe when the cringe happened oh Oh yeah, definitely, definitely for sure. And uh, this is probably our lowest thing so far of the year. But uh, but it was it was what we needed after uh, one day. Oh yeah. But it, it was entertaining, and I liked it, and it did like elevate itself above normal rom coms in certain places. But then, like you said, also other places it got really cringe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, also since we're in the non spoilers, I won't go into detail. But there is one character that seemingly just completely had a heel turn. Yeah. Right. Right? It, it it felt like it kind of it felt like it came out of nowhere to be honest we'll, t we'll talk about that in the spoiler free or that's, spoiler section that's what i was saying yeah yeah that's what i was saying no i feel that but i feel that but uh also the whole thing of setting it in the world of uh sport journalism is I, really cool i think Although, it's i think it's awesome and also the uh you know the main uh female lead map played by gina rodriguez excellent taste in sports not biased or excellent taste in sports teams not biased at all totally not biased but yeah, it's yeah. also kind of weird that this was the setting because um what should we call it uh gina rodriguez right now has a show out called not dead yet and uh she her character has the same job as brian oh right right obit yep what's the uh, so what's the premise uh whoever she's writing the obit of mm -hmm. she can speak to their ghost oh that's that's actually a cool concept i, yeah. I think we saw a trailer of that yep and uh, i i watched season one and talked about it on screen time yep that's why it sounds familiar but but yeah um the the chick the chick from uh superstore is her boss yeah, yeah dina dina i remember yeah i definitely remember you talking about this although i will say i'm a little hesitant to start watching season two why is that because now they've introduced her boss dina's dina's character's boss okay played by and brad garrett oh from everybody oh, oh ellie's dead that's yeah. cool <laughs> yes. i know you i know you listen to this podcast bitch so <laughs> yeah ellie's but, dead but yeah ever since he entered his sandwicher i've been a little iffy on him so we'll have to wait and see but uh, i mean I, he, I i've liked him i've liked him in dramatic stuff i haven't seen him in comedy again so i can't speak to that yeah but anyway time will tell it, the new season just started i haven't started it yet but mm. uh it was really cool um her first ghost was actually the uh i think it was the principal from um sabrina the teenage Witch. oh cool but yeah but, mm -hmm. but anyway back to the movie itself it was good for what it was yeah yeah Defin I could agree. definitely agree with that and um you know for me personally Personally, uh, as a self-admitted former fuckboy, ho, <laughs> slut, man whore, whatever you want to throw, all applies basically because it's the same shit. Um, I I related to I related to Max slash Gina Rodriguez's character. It I, I wasn't a one for one like Homegirl from uh, Straight Gods. No, but but it, but you know I uh, she, she had she has she had some similar habits. She has some similar habits and similar taste in sports teams. Again, excellent. Totally not biased. And I definitely vibe with uh not my namesake but my close namesake ryan yep yep but yeah like uh also also any ass men or women listening to this podcast you'll be eating good mm -hmm. just say that so, so good you'll be eating good also also uh because we haven't mentioned it yet liza koshi is in this and she does amazing oh yeah liza's great liza's great you should definitely support this for if anything else for liza alone because i think she's underrated as an actor yep and we love we love we love to see our uh, you know 
know, Vine slash YouTube OGs finally, yeah. you know, get their recognition in the big time. Yeah. So, you know, definitely big props to the little brown girl. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I would I would quote her finish that quote, but we're not at the end of the podcast. Yep. So uh, this is where we're just going to jump into spoiler her territory just and nope. so we can freely talk about how we felt about the movie of uh, different plot points and such different characters. So uh, if you haven't seen it, go see the movie. Do that free time or, you know, need something to do with your significant other. Like, I definitely think it's not a waste of time. It's a fun movie. It's a good pick me up kind of. Yeah. If you enjoy rom coms and you don't mind, you know, a little basic, oh, you'll, enjoy, you'll enjoy it. But yeah, so five, four, three two one spoiler alert spoiler alert spoiler alert okay all right i'm gonna i'm gonna start i'm gonna start okay. first off first off i was livid i was pissed this yeah. girl mac kept mm -hmm. breaking all the rules yeah she mm -hmm. she broke all the rules this is not how you're supposed to operate as a hoe okay like peer to peer this is not how you operate and i can't e i can't even say like well i'm younger i'm younger than her you know my hoe is different from hers it's not that big of an age different so yeah no we are we're in, we're in the same generation of hoe so i i know the rules and you broke most of them also you skipped some major steps mac you don't go for the drawer you don't aim for the drawer first you you, you, you aim you aim for like consistent dates first but you don't aim for the, the drawer should not be your goal that's massive that that's just icarus territory waiting to happen flying way too close to the sun um other stuff i uh to talk about what you know what Brian was saying earlier, I feel like the quote unquote twist with uh Nick Tom Ellis's character was kind of like out of nowhere and like kind of forced a little bit so that the main couple could have a justification because otherwise, like, because Matt was being a bitch to um Nick, and I mean, same goes for Adam towards his girlfriend. So I feel like they did the whole reveal Nick is a pretentious asshole thing just so that it could make sense to. And we wouldn't feel bad for her leaving him. Yeah. After her being that's an why, asshole to him. That's why I use the uh, wrestling term of a surprise heel turn. Oh yeah, definitely a surprise heel turn for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, pretty solid. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of cute stuff. Uh, I think Ryan and uh, Ryan and Ashley were adorable, even though they hurt, they hurt my feelings when, <laughs> when, well, I, Ashley hurt my feelings when she referred to Matt and her friends as old people, and I'm their age. Mm -hmm. That, that, that hurt my feelings a lot yeah more than it should have well damn it hurt my soul um, man look it really it, i googled uh -huh. i googled it dina rodriguez looks great for her age how old is she 39 god damn god damn she she's uh, she's 39 and still doing squats <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. she's good, good. <laughs> she's definitely still doing squats. Mm -hmm. But I do agree with you. There were points that made me really mad. Like the cringe stuff, the ho stuff. A lot, also, a lot of cringe. Like, and, and, also and, the, and, uh, and, and also, to clarify, listeners, I'm not mad that she's a ho, right? No. And, and I'm not mad that she admitted that she's a ho. I'm a ho too. Or I was, at least. No longer, but was. And as someone who, you know, has retired their jersey and to keep you to use sports metaphors i also know the rules of the game and she fucked up the rules of the game mm -hmm. he wasn't mad at the game just how she was playing exactly mm -hmm. she was making rookie moves for someone who claims to be a veteran at this game mm -hmm. she easily broke the home amendments although i will admit i wish i had come up with that port mine toe were... solid tony good one <laughs> thank you thank good you one. Were, at least for another minute <laughs> but there were some times where we thought that she broke them yeah then we realized like, she, no. she technically didn't, but I, I, I but I was still, I'm still, I was still a little perturbed. Was, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, the, that was in his building. That was in her building, and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's rule number one. You don't, you don't fuck anybody that lives where you live. That, that's gonna be awkward as hell. That's just, that's just against the code. And I was like, oh, he's moving. That's why. Okay, I, I got you. You're good. Yeah, especially when you go to that length to lie about your personality. I mean. You, it, no, I meant I meant just simply for the fact of to see them day to day after you've created that fake persona. Oh yeah, I mean to be honest, uh, since you know, since Mac and myself are very similar, I'm pretty sure I can comfortably speak for her. And to quote our good buddy and friend of the show, Cap, I love lying. <laughs> so, but when you have someone like that, it's harder to keep the lies in check. And oh yeah, you end up being like uh, when 
uh, was it Ryan tried to do the play on his own? No, no, it was Brian. Brian was the one who tried okay. to do the play on his own. And then he, and like, then he yep, then he messed up because he... Like I said, we're watching. That totally not confusing. Oh, yeah. Also, Brian needed to shut fuck up. Speaking about Brian. Yep, yep. Like, Brian was being a big cry-ass baby. He, not our, he, our Brian. He, well, our Brian is still a cry-ass baby. But, <laughs> but not, 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 um, not, not, not in the same, not in the same way as uh, movie Brian. Context, but, but th this Ryan, Brian with a... Brian. Bri 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 instead of a Y. Mm. Yep, nah. He, he, he had to go. He had to go. They, they, mm -hmm. they, they could keep little, but he had to go. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's not that he was bad, because he was definitely useful within the team, but, like, uh, I just I just thought all his all his shit fell flat. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, if you just wrote him out, it, it would it would be no different, honestly. Uh, also, who the fuck hates Mike and Ikes? Yeah, that man... Look, 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 look. I understand candy preferences. We all have those. Yep. So, saying Mike and Ikes are trash simply because they get stuck in your teeth. That's just booty short thinking and, and you are stupid. And like, <laughs> look, look, I would have been able to accept you not liking Mike and Ikes, but then you're like, but then you make the joke that the Mike and Ikes were so terrible that they probably killed Adam. No, Mike and Ikes don't deserve that. Fuck you. Uh, they know their well, name. I mean, this is also the same man who was, uh, was a uh, boohooing falafel. Right? Uh, man, uncultured swine, Brian. Uncultured. Un Culture. But yeah. yeah, but yeah. Um, little, little was a fun character. I enjoyed yeah. little. He he was yeah. cool. He was cool. I I liked I liked seeing his character growth and just the running gags with him. Like, uh, why are you even here? You don't work here. It it reminded me as a callback to uh, a couple episodes ago. It reminded me of uh 2024 Mean Girls. Oh yeah. Y'all, she doesn't even go here. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, she's doing amazing, but she still doesn't go here. Mm -hmm. Like that shit was funny. And all all the running gags with him and the inter him as the intern and also shout out to carl carl's hilarious shout yeah carl carl carl, carl. Uh, you do uh, yeah, he, he kind of reminded me of one of the like uh like he could be a forgotten like uh b cast member of like the office i could see that i could totally or, see that or he he gives me the vibe of that one npc character that you find in an rpg that just caught your attention and you want to know more about them no no he so, yeah he, he's definitely the rpg character uh, rpg npc uh specifically a jrpg npc that just ha has the funny quote you might you'll mm -hmm. never you'll never remember what the npc looks like but you'll remember that they told you that their body was ready yeah, or shorts are comfy to wear what was the what was the hard one there was a quote with hard i don't remember oh 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 right i trained i trained my body to be rock hard at all times i love that one. <laughs> i love that guy I, he, I I I don't remember his name, but I do remember he was in the mine. He was a miner, and I mean, as in worked in the mines, not underage. Good, cause otherwise that would be awkward. I mean, it's Pokemon, so he's talking to another child, so maybe not. But that's another discussion. But but uh, changing the subject, uh, Kirk was awesome too. For the little for the little we got to see of her, yeah. Yep. Cool uh, boss. Cool boss. Marion Hinkle. She's been in a lot of stuff. She gave me. Was it? Is Kate? Was Kate Blanchett the Devil Wears Prada? Or no? Was that Meryl Streep? Meryl Streep. It was Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. That's what I thought. I was gonna but, say Meryl Streep, but uh, but for some reason I said Kate Blanchett. But yeah, she gave me. Meryl Streep and Devil Made uh, Devil Wears Prada meets J. Jonah Jameson vibe. Kinda. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Also, uh, Jay, I was Googling to see what else she's been in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I totally forgot about this. Okay. She's Miss Basil's mom. <gasps> oh, shit. That's why she looks familiar. That's awesome. Yeah. I will know her always as Judith from uh, Two and a Half Men. But it, guys, if you if you haven't and you and you like like sarcastic, witty, fast paced comedy, go mm -hmm. watch The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It's done. Mm -hmm. Four seasons. Great show. Rachel Brosnan hand deserved all the awards she got tony shalhoub is amazing uh zachary levi was in it for a bit and he was fun mm -hmm. i i, I kind of wish his character's name was chuck just for the funny but it wasn't uh but yeah go watch miss middle on prime this is not net yeah for what little we saw of kirk kirk was awesome yeah she was cool he was definitely cool uh we already talked about ashley ashley was a lot of fun uh her being like the missing piece mvp was dope as hell mm -hmm. um we already shit on brian we 
oh, need to by talk the way. about elephants in the room. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, oh, what were you going to say, Brian? Before, before, I was gonna say, before we jump um, to that. Mm -hmm. The director, I just looked her up. Uh, she's newer, but it makes sense for her uh, vibe. She did a Pitch Perfect 3. Oh, that one wasn't bad. That was a good uh, one. She also did, uh, if you ever saw the Netflix movie, uh, The Sleepover. Mm. Nope, I don't think so. No. It's this one where these kids are doing a sleepover at their house and uh, it turns into a like spy adventure thing. Hmm, uh, interesting. Ken Marino, Malin Ackerman were in it and uh, Joe Manganiello was in it as like a James Bond stand-in. Oh, cool. Hilarious. But yes. Anyway, like, like this one, it was predictable, easy, and fun, but not like great cinema. Yeah, but at the, like, you know, at the very least, we can definitely say that it isn't forgettable. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So it and, it will uh, it will not have to be in the same class as Monkey King. Yep. But as you were saying, the elephants in the room. All right, Tony. So, you, here we go. You you uh you, you you can lead this play. We need we need to rip off the band aid and we need to talk about our heel here for a moment. All right. So yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, like I said before, it, it feels just forced as hell because he was he was great and also like if like right before all this stuff happened mac was kind of an asshole to him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i was feeling bad for him because mac was over there making eyes and clearly in love with adam and you know same goes for adam oh yeah which mm -hmm. i do find it kind of funny and ironic that we find out that we weren't the only ones who saw that oh yeah his mm -hmm. date also did and so that's when they broke up yeah like i mean i'm I, anybody would sense anybody would sense would do that except for tom ellis's character apparently well, to yeah that's what i'm saying that was that was the other thing right that was the other thing i it, do, it doesn't make sense to me that he stayed with her after that brunch mm -hmm. i mean it makes sense to me that and also his his reason for getting if, if his reason for getting more distant and colder was because of the brunch i would have totally accepted that that would have made sense would that would have made sense and i would i would it, you know this heel turn might have made like might have been easier to process but like when he says that the reason is because he knows Mac is getting fired and he doesn't tell Mac that her job is on the line. That that was just that was just poor, poor taste, bad move, and all and then his mm -hmm. editing of her piece. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cardinal sin number one when dating a writer. If they ask you for edits and feedback, you give edit and feedback. You do not, you do not rewrite anything they've written unless they have given you express permission to write that thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because every piece a writer creates no matter how brilliant no matter how shitty that is a part of that writer and it means something to them so oh, yeah. don't do that shit mm -mm. you don't do that no nope. so like I, and that's why that's the other reason i felt like it feels felt forced because like that was over the top right oh yeah like i feel like his negative comments were just enough where you're like oh that's a dick move but like understandable you know you, your sensibilities are different from hers so maybe you don't maybe you don't get it that's cool and then you know you guys can have an you can guys can have an argument uh, and then he uh, you leave him because he just doesn't get what you want and then you mm -hmm. get with adam that would have made sense but mm -hmm. nah they did they had to do this and i think it was on per it was on purpose to make people mad and hate him instantly because that's yeah, e that's exactly what happened yeah because also their fight about it it ended with him saying that he didn't like anything of her piece like, yeah, like, that is a huge dick move. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, if 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 he had criticized, like, you know, the tone, some of the pace, like, I would have been fine with that. But like, all like the thing is, right, that that really felt out of character for me with this particular character is, uh, they established early on that he's a stepdad, right? No, so, I don't it, think so. No, yeah, he, yeah, he is. Or, they established that he saved a kid from a burning building. I thought he had. I thought yeah. he was also a co-parent, and like his kids, uh, like no. the first time they had sex, like the kids weren't. Home. No, no, that was a picture of his family, like his mom and dad. Oh, okay. Never mind. I, 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 I can't. This, this point is uh, no longer relevant. Continue. So, okay, my perspective. Okay. Ah. Just, 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 just a, a helpful tip to all writers. And I think you can agree with me here, gentlemen. Okay. If you want to make a character come off as a dick and still make sense, you gotta give them qualities that make them a bit more dickish. Just little things. Yeah. Small things that may be under the radar, but are. It, yeah, it, 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 it would have been better if they sprinkled in like dickish habits. Yeah. yeah, and did we see any of that in Nick? No, no. Um, up until 
killed the party. He seemed perfectly fine, like a perfectly fine person. Yeah, and 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 we, and you know, we d didn't think he was perfect, like the Lulu ass Mac, obviously, but like we thought he was just a decent dude. Yeah, yeah. you know. But, that, but I could see the angle that they were trying to do. Yeah, they want to give the vibe of like since Mac didn't really know him and his overall personality, she would be blindsided by the things he would do. But here's my problem with that, right? Yeah, that that and uh, one of the things I have problems with it as well. Okay. I saw yeah, you can yeah, you can go first. But their execution, mm -hmm. but their execution was the issue. Oh yeah. See, my issue is right. Like that could be your excuse of like she she doesn't know his actual personality. She doesn't know him. But mm -hmm. I counter that with the fact that they ran an extensive op on him and collected all the data on him, and she purposely crafted a persona that would he would love that she knew was not her but she did it anyway so yeah like so i just add that to what i just brought up you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. find the two and that's kind of the problem we have with nick as that initial love interest idea for our leading lady mm -hmm. it's the idea of what she wanted because let's be honest here she just got good dick and wanted to keep it yeah we've we've all been there well none of us with dick actually because we're all straight here but i've def i've definitely been there with pussy more than a few times more than a few times there have been several times where my friends in college were like dude that bitch is crazy you should run i'm like no 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 it's it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine i'm good i'm good it narrator it in fact was not fine no no it, no it wasn't but, but but you know when the door when the doors were locked and the lights were off it was fine it was it this was, was a party it was very fine but that's neither here nor there uh fact of the matter is nick could have been a good bait and switch if they wrote it better yeah, yeah. but if we want to talk about uh, lulu our leading lady mackenzie mackenzie whatever your middle names and last name is girl what the fuck is wrong with you that's what i kept repeating all throughout the watch mm -hmm. it it's like, like all of us here, we all agree. I like we were all just big mad at this girl. Listen, so, listen, so listen, so man. Bad. Listen, man. I, we've all been to Lulu in love, okay? I understand. Mm -hmm. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I get mm -hmm. it. And I get being blind to a lot of shit when like good genitalia are involved. But, and we could all become dildo trees when someone actually glances at you for like a hot minute and tolerates your existence. So like, oh, yes. so like, it's not that we don't get it, but like. Like, because we get it, we were more disappointed. Mm -hmm. I mean, the end, I guess the one, the big plus with it is that it made the ending, uh, much more cathartic. Yeah. But, like, it, did. it was, it was like a fucking finally kind of cathartic. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh my yeah. god. It, it's like you, it's, okay, this might be dumb coming from me. Okay. But it's like that one friend that kept on telling you, like, hey, I've been telling you to leave this individual for how long now? And you finally listened to me? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, that's accurate. But yeah, it, it, Mac, but man, you, you, you're smart. You're smart. You know your plays. You know your people. You know, you know, you know how the game works. But like, dude, you are learning yourself, which I can't fault her for because so am I. But like, we all are. It doesn't. We all are. It doesn't mean it doesn't fucking hurt when you see Egg. when you see someone you care about who is mm -hmm. similar to you go through the same shit. And I'm just Egg. like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. I know what's going to happen because i've done that but yeah so i, mean, I honestly have nothing bad to say about adam uh, nothing bad at all adam, he, was a, he was a real one like i like you know i will give him shit for uh the brunch because you know that was a two-person yeah. that was a two-person sabotage there oh definitely but and he and Claire actually worked well together and i yeah. uh, so also you want to know what i thought about that i think i would have accepted much more than the uh nick heel turn hmm. i would have liked i would have liked it if Claire and Nick ended up together. Oh. Hmm. And like, you know... They like they see like it's the same diner scene, but with Nick after she after Mac and Nick break up cordially because of their differences in philosophy and thoughts on writing. Mm -hmm. Like I think that would have been much better. Yeah, and uh, you know what else might have been an option? Okay, mm -hmm. is if just in the end, um, Nick, there was nothing wrong with him. Yeah, she just realized. Yeah, she like, she she just finally realized that she like she was in love with the idea of him and what he 
represented and not him. Her coming to that epiphany and being mature enough to cut things off and, you know, but, but like be mature and amicable about it, that would show a lot of character development. I agree, Brian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and... It, it makes me more infuriated that that yeah. was journey we do not get. Yeah. But well, it is what it is. I, uh, I, uh, I did love all the sports references. Uh, I, I understood all of those. I, I, I was, I was definitely mm -hmm. the Captain America meme every time um, a sports also, reference came up. Also, I will say as far as a rom-com friend who's always liked the lead to go, Adam was pretty up there. No, like, yeah, no, he's reasonable. He's, he's high up there for sure because not only do they have amazing chemistry but the reason for his like delay made perfect sense and it actually made him seem like a more reasonable person unlike his yeah. unlike his fucking partner over here mm -hmm. uh but mm -hmm. but like that, that's why adam 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 raises it for me right because because mm -hmm. like i love mac i do you know she she she's she's my sister and hold him but <laughs> like frustrated frustrated disappointed even oh yeah disappointed it's that one disappointed me yep but um, yeah so Final thoughts and ratings. We'll, well start before we do though, real oh, quick. Okay. I uh, didn't know when to insert this, but uh, pause. I did Google it. And, yeah, but uh, I did when I was looking at the actors and we were talking about the actors. I did look it up. Okay. Uh, the guy that plays Little. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually know him. Oh. Uh, Why did he be in it? His name is uh, Joel Courtney. Uh, no relation to Jai. I was just about uh, to ask. I double checked, but uh, he first got his like first note of fame when he was the lead in Super Eight. Oh, sure. I loved Ooh. Super Eight. Okay. He was the lead little kid in Super 8. Nice. And then also, um, he was, uh, the other romantic lead that wasn't, uh, Jacob Elordi in Kissing Booth. Oh, cool. Nice. Uh, lead. Nice. Good for him. But, but anyway, sorry. Back to final no. thoughts. Yeah, you're fine. Final thoughts and ratings. Oh, we'll start with you actually, Brian. Okay. Like I said, it was good, but not great. There were some things that really teetered it from being higher up than I would maybe want, like the heel turn of Dick and and our lead character, not just her breaking the rules of Hodum, but the other stupid mistakes that she made, like the drawer and all that, and being just the fact alone that it is cliche. So I think in the end, I'm going to give it a flat eight. Huh. That is uh, higher than, uh, that's higher than I expected, honestly. Uh, I'll, so I'll go next. Um, I give it a seven, a flat seven, because like, you know, those negative, those negatives definitely dragged it down. But like six to me means forgettable. Six is what I gave Monkey King. So so I definitely couldn't give it a six, but I also couldn't in good conscience give it anything higher than a seven because I talked all that shit. So sticking with a solid seven. Still a good movie though. Mm -hmm. And Tony. I'm right at seven. All right. All right. It, it's seven. Okay. I just realized something. What's that? Mm. I was on the high of Adam, uh, of uh, talking about Adam. And I think that maybe made me push it a little too high. Oh, so we got, we got, we got a last minute revision. Is, it, is, is, is this a, is this a slot machine episode? episode triple well, sevens no no uh i'm only gonna go down 0. 0.5 continue the trend still technically triple seven, seven. technically yeah. still triple seven okay but yeah okay cool so yeah definitely check out players if you're into rom-coms but mm. now folks our boy brian here is gonna tell you what we're gonna cover in next week's episode when we travel using the wayback machine yeah oh. because there is no other way to uh do a better transition because it is we're not recording or releasing maybe on Thursday, but we are doing a throwback. We are going on a road trip, ladies and gentlemen. A road trip crossroads. Yep. The uh, Britney Spears underrated uh, coming of age. Coming of age rom-com road trip adventure. Yep. With a banging soundtrack. Mm -hmm. But I mean, and, it, it's Britney, bitch. And a supporting cast of people who would get a lot more famous. Oh yeah. It, it's gonna it's gonna be really fun to, to spot the uh, the baby versions of some of our favorite actors. Yeah, and to see our boy Tony here's first reaction to it. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Really fun. So I'm looking forward to it. Brian's looking forward to it. I'm sure Tony is as well. Yeah, we definitely needed like more of a uh, like relaxation from one day. Yep. But that wraps it up for this week's episode of the Channel Traders Podcast. That is the buzzer. We'll catch you guys next week. Peace.